I have something different I want to share with you today. A folding knife. This is the Reich P875. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank the company Reich of Canada for sending me the P875 so that I could share it with you. So what did I mean when I said something different? How often have you seen me review a folding knife on this channel? Only a couple of times, I think. Now, I have a lot of folding knives at home. I have some fairly good ones. I have very few that are in the what you would call the expensive range, but uh, it's, it's just not something I take out into the woods with me every day. However, I do carry a folding knife with me every day. So let's get into the details of this knife. What we're going to do is just focus in a little closer so I can give you some closer look at it. I'll go over its specifications and I'll talk about my experiences carrying it. All right, so once again, this is the Reich. P875-SZ. And before someone says it, yes, it is a flipper design. Mark, aren't those illegal in Canada? Because that's the rumor. Well, do you know, I assumed it was illegal in Canada. Now, I know my American friends are going to say, what are you talking about? There, there's nothing wrong with a flipper. And there's not. I love them. And I think they're a great knife design. In Canada, though, you have trouble importing these. However, what's interesting is Reich of Canada had no problem shipping this to me. So I said, if you're okay with shipping it to me, I'm okay with reviewing it. So that's the reason why I have this as a flipper knife here in Canada. Yes, unusual, I know. All right, let's get into a few details as I give you some looks over the night. So as it stands right now, overall length, 8.19 inches, which is 208 millimeters. Blade length, 3.5 inches, 89 millimeters. Blade thickness. 0.14 of an inch, 3.5 millimeters. Overall weight, 4.94 inches, 148 grams. Blade steel, 14C28N Sandvik stainless steel. So good choice for a folding knife. We'll talk more about that in a few moments time. Now, we'll get into the design and the finish in a moment because there's some kind of unique features on this. But uh, the weight, let's just talk about the weight for a minute. Yes, it's almost a five ounce knife. It's not an ultralight knife. You will notice carrying this in your pocket. The reason being stainless steel handles. Now they have been not totally skeletonized, but they have some relief cuts in the inside. I don't think will show up. Maybe I'll be able to find a picture of it somewhere to show you. But there is relief milling on the insides to lighten up a little bit. But otherwise, this is a frame lock design full-on stainless steel. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the design as we go. The other thing is it's not stone wash, but it is a matte finish. So there's, it's just a nice non-glare matte finish on the blade itself. All right, so let's start, start with the design. Starting with the blade, it is a drop point, almost full flat grind, as you can see, very, very attractive, as well as very, very functional. The top of it, where you would think it might be flat, is actually milled towards this wet so it's a little bit thinner right at the spine than it is right at that transition line that transition line is actually the widest or thickest point on the blade itself as i mentioned it is a flipper design it has a ball bearing action in the center with detents to in the locked position or closed not locked so much as well as the open position very very quick easy deployment at that. Now, I wanted to show you the frame lockup. So as I mentioned, it is a frame lock and you can see where it is locking up on there. Now, one more feature about the frame lock. It has a locking mechanism to keep it in that position. This is known as the beta plus safety system. So it's an extra degree of safety as if the frame lock wasn't uh, strong enough. It's an extra degree of safety to prevent closing on your fingers. So it really does a good job of preventing, like there is no movement of that frame lock at all when that's engaged. Something I use all the time, Hardly, not really very often at all, to be honest, but it's nice to have it if you really feel you need to have that extra level of safety so it doesn't close on you. So very easy to engage with the frame lock to open and close it. Let's move down that knife. 
pocket clip. Pocket clip is nice. It is quite flat. You can see it's not really, really deep. There is a little bit of a gap at the top. I'm actually fine with that. People, some people like to have it with a full on deep carry, mm -hmm. tip up type carry. Uh, by the way, this is not, you can't move it front to back or top to bottom. So it is fixed in that position. It's actually milled into the frame a little bit to give it some recess there. My only comment on this is, um, I like it. It when I put it in my jeans pocket, something about the the top of the jeans pocket just make it a little bit too difficult to get out. However, every other pair of pants I wear, uh, it's not a problem at all. And maybe that's a, just an extra degree of security. I'm not sure. Rolling the knife over, there is a nylon spacer at the back here, as you can see. Functional, yep. Yeah but also decorative, but it's not so standoutish. Now, what does stand out about this is this side of the knife. Look at the milling, right? So Reich says that's a honeysuckle pattern that's milled into the steel, kind of very old school looking. It's not hand done, I'm sure it's machine done, but still attractive, yeah, but also functional. I find that it does provide traction on for that side of the knife. So it's not sharp, but there is traction there with that. And a small piece of carbon fiber inset here. Overall finish on this knife is that same matte finish all the way around. But boy, when I, the more I looked at this, look at the detail, look at the grooves along here. Same thing on the ends. On this side of the knife, it's just like, there's a lot of little details that it takes a while to pick up even right up here. Now, let me just show you an advantage of that I didn't expect. It's almost like a thumb wrap to lay my thumb here in this position. And in this position, it works very, very well. Of course, the flipper does act like a bit of a guard if you need that to keep your fingers from moving forward onto the blade for any reason. Just a nice looking knife. I, I like it as a dressy knife and in terms of it as a good looking knife that you know, you're proud to own, you don't mind showing off the quality, the construction and everything else, way above its price point, I'll tell you that. Any downsides? Just a little bit heavy, like this is not something you're gonna to wear to the office, but if it goes in my jeans well enough, or in any other pair of pants that I'm wearing, love playing with that flipper. All right, let's just focus back out. I'll give you some of my experiences carrying this. So as I mentioned when I opened the video up, um, I don't do a lot of folding knife reviews because they're not a tool that I would take into the woods very often. Maybe as a backup to a larger knife when you don't need the strength of a fixed blade and, and a folding knife will work. Yeah, maybe then, but not often. I, but however, having said that, I do carry one every day. I carry, there are two knives that I always have with me. One is a small multi-tool from Leatherman, the little, hmm, what's it called? It's the one that has the pliers and the scissors. I love it. It's been something my wife gave me many years ago. That's always on me every day. And then some other type of folding knife. It's something out of my rotation. As I mentioned, I have quite a collection. Some of them are old school, most of them are old school knives, but a lot of them are knives like this that are a, a folding knife with some type of a locking mechanism and a pocket clip on it so I can carry it in my pocket. So yeah, I have them every day. What do I use them for? What do you use any pocket knife for in everyday carry? A lot of it are tasks like opening boxes, cutting string, things like that around the house, and food preparation. And that's a task that I did use this knife for in the last six weeks that I've had it. It's just, it was right there. It was the sharpest knife in the kitchen, the one that's in my pocket, the one that I have control over how sharp it remains. So this is the one I dug out for cutting up a lot of vegetables, a lot of meat, a lot of cheese, you name it, those types of things. And I found this to be highly, highly effective for that. It's just a good design. As I mentioned, the only downside is just a little bit of weight. I did say they have it milled out inside. I don't think I can show you that. Let me just have a closer look. Yeah, that's just not, I can see it, but I'd have to have a flashlight out here to be able to show you that. I'll, again, I'll see if I can't put a picture on the screen of the milling of a disassembled version of this knife so that you can, uh, uh, just to see what it looks like. It doesn't remove a lot of weight. It does remove some weight and it doesn't take away anything from the strength of the knife. But maybe you don't mind that extra weight. I haven't, honestly, it's worked well for me. I don't mind the weight at all. As I mentioned, this really is way above its price point. It's a knife that looks and feels like something much more expensive. 
the quality of the steel, 14C, 14C28N stainless steel uh, is great. It's not bare entry level, but it's neither is it a super steel. It is a good quality steel that will hold its edge, its edge reasonably well, yet it's still easy enough that you can sharpen it. And then the sharpening I've done on this, ceramic, that's it. That's all I've had to do. Now, I do that every so few days anyway. So down a ceramic rod, running across a uh, strop, and it's good. And it's maintained its edge. I have had no chipping, no rolling, none of the issues that you might if with a hard use. Okay, that's my experiences with it. That's my thoughts on it. I think it's a good looking knife. It's a very functional knife, and I think it's well worth taking a look at if you're in the market for it. Again, I was as surprised as many of you are, will be that I could get this in Canada from a Canadian distributor. We'll go with it as long as they're willing to send them, then we'll buy them, right? All right, if you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments section below. All the specifications and the links to where you can see this knife in the Reich of Canada will be in the video description. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.